I saw some rain in the forecast and I knew this might get the striped bass going, so I spent the next seven days targeting and catching these fish. Day one, about 30 minutes into fishing, I hit a brick wall just about 10 feet in front of me. It bolted and proceeded to peel drag for about six minutes straight. Probably going on 30 minutes into this fight here. This is the longest fight I've ever experienced. By the time I was one hour into this fight, I knew I was on my PB fish. So I just wanted to make sure that I landed this monster. This is a fun way to spend the night. Like if I just land this fish, release it and go home, I'll be happy. Oh, and it's got to be after 1030 now. We're playing this crazy game of tug of war right here. Back and forth, back and forth. Look, I've got a lot of lines. We did it. Okay, and uh, snagged him right there in the dorsal fin. Snagged him right there in the... So it took about five hours to land that fish. Certainly I could have turned up my drag and put a little more pressure on it, but I didn't want to risk popping my 20 pound leader or bending out my hook. And it's a good thing too, because as you can see, that fish was barely hooked. Just one hook in the dorsal fin. If I had turned up my drag and pulled any harder, I might have just bent out that hook and lost my PB fish. I think this is a great testimony to the strength of those stock hooks on the Battlestar 115 and proof that if you just turn down your drag, you can probably land just about any monster. Okay, so day two, the bite was on almost instantly. That feels like a perch, I think. Feels like a nice big slab perch. He's on the surface. He grabbed it, oh yeah. And it is, oh, it's actually a small striper. Look at that, guys, on like my third or fourth cast. I've got a small striper, let's. guys all right numero uno on like fifth cast let's get some more of them looking for the big one i'm not looking for the little ones i don't want the little ones i want the big one on the battle star 115 i want to get my line back in the water i'm looking for a big striped bass that's all i care about right now looking around at the conditions and the existing bite I had a good feeling that I just might catch a monster fish today. I got a feeling tonight's going to be a good night. I had learned the night before from that five hour battle with the 55 inch leopard shark that I better fish with at least 30 pound leader or even consider going with straight 30 pound braid. Fishing straight braid today. I ain't going to mess around with no 20 pound leaders. No more five hour battles with the five foot leopard sharks. Oh, there's one. There's one. That, that feels big. Oh, he came off. That one felt a lot bigger. The water's clear enough today. Okay, jerk and then retrieve. Slow and steady here for a sec. Let's jerk it and then pause. Just pick up that slack. Jerk and pause. Let him inhale it. Jerk, pause. Jerk, pause. Oh, there we go. Woo! That feels like a short, but a striper for sure. There it is. Oh, it's a perch. That is a big perch, dude. Whoa, dude, I thought that was a striped bass. It's so big. We're looking at a nice slab. Let's go ahead and get that on the stringer because that thing looks delicious. I'm going to eat that fish. It was looking so fishy to me that I decided to invest my time in fishing and keep my bait in the water all the way till one hour past the high tide. What we do have going for us today is rain. It's a pre-front, I mean, it's just starting to rain right now. It's like my favorite time to fish when it just starts to rain. And we've got full moon is tomorrow. We've got a high tide at about 9.45 or 10 p.m. I want to point out that as you can see i'm investing a lot of time and energy and even money into fishing for these striped bass i had waited all year for the conditions to line up like this so when they finally did i felt like i didn't have a choice i had to go fishing i want to fish for that like that whole hour after high tide i've caught some of my best fish 45 minutes after p 
peak tide, whether it be high or low. My best striper came after 45 minutes after a high tide. My best halibut came 45 minutes after a low tide. I fished this spot like 15 or 16 times for striped bass and I've never caught one. So today's the first time I finally caught one here. And it was a little one. I'm looking for the big mama. So we're gonna have to keep working harder. All right, nice steady retrieve. I see my rod tip bouncing. I know it's clean, presentable. I'm over here, I'm over here. I'm just slowing it. Oh, there it is. Nice slow retrieve is the trick. That's a perch for sure. Shaking his head like a perch. Nice big perch. That's another slab for the stringer right there, guys. We're getting some good perch. On the glow pink sardine, guys, it works like a charm. It's a really good bait. There's no question about it. Ah, uh, something just taps. It's a fire bite right now. Oh, there's a tap. I'm gonna slow it down. Boy, this is exciting. It feels good to get on a fire bite once in a while. Got my drag set. Anytime you're fishing a jerk bait, make sure your drag is set so they don't you don't bend out your hook. Just tight enough to set that hook. That's all you need. All right, we got one. He switched over to the jerk bait and he got one. When I got here, he was fishing a a bucktail with a swim bait, a curl tail. And he wasn't catching anything. He saw me catch four fish in a row. He switched over to the jerk bait and hooked up. All right, I'm so happy, dude. We're catching fish. Oh, damn. I missed that one. One. Oh, damn, he came off. I think I pulled too hard. Oh, there. That's... Okay, that fish on right there. Don't pull too hard. Medium pressure, medium pressure. Come on, come on, come on. Little striper. All right, so three perch and two stripers. Check that out. On that glow pink sardine. Just another little guy. We're looking for the big one though. So I just want to shake this guy off and get him out here. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. We did it guys, we found a big one. He hit it so hard, he hit it so hard, and now he's just, he's coming in, he's coming in, medium pressure, medium pressure, he's not even moving. It's like I hit a rock. So as I was fighting this fish, it felt like I had snagged a big log caught in a rip current. But then, as striped bass often do, it turned its head and started swimming straight towards me. That's when I cranked as fast as I could, and started walking backwards. But then I tripped over a tree branch that was stuck in the sand behind me. It honestly, it feels like I snagged a rock. It's so big. Medium pressure, medium pressure, maintain, maintain. Almost like I ran into another leopard shark. Oh boy, here it comes, he's coming closer. That's what stripers do too. Sometimes they come towards you. Okay, dude, look at that. He's not even budging right now. He's, he's moving away from me. Dude, it feels like a big old clump of seaweed stuck in the freaking wash right now. Oh, oh, I'm down. I just fell on a... He's, he's right there. He's in the wash. He's huge. Get him. Let's get him. Let's get him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Woo! We did it. We did it. We did it. That's got to be 28 inches. Look, guys. Look. Look. On the glow pink sardine. Battle star, baby! Goose Coast Fishing, California Surf Fishing. Shout out to the crew, Jason Hill, Gary and Casper Kazazian, Austin Lee, all my homies here in San Luis Obispo, you know who you are. I love you guys. We fished hard. We just kept going and going and going. I'm telling you, I always get them after high tide. And it happened, we got them after high tide. So happy, so happy. I love it. Thank you, Edward from Hook to Cook for all of your awesome tips on how to catch these fish. Oh, that's a nice one. I'm so happy. Let's try to get that nice and clear for you. All right, so that's at zero. And that is at 30.
on the Battlestar Glow Pink Stardine after high tide, about say 45 minutes after high tide. But that's, that's my tip, you guys. If you wanna catch the big fish, you wanna be out there 45 minutes after high tide. Beautiful slabs, really nice big barred surf perch right there. It's probably 14, 15 inches. And I'm um, just couldn't be more pleased, guys. And notice that I'm fishing straight braid. Boy, I am so glad I was fishing 30 pounds straight braid that night. And also that that fish got hooked really well. As far as I know, nobody else has caught a 30 inch striped bass yet this season on the central coast. So I feel really lucky that I caught that fish. I'm not using any leader and I'm really grateful for that. This fish was so heavy, it felt like I snagged a log. He hit so hard and just shook his head so hard. That's the only reason I knew it was a fish. If you know me, you know me, I love you and I'm really grateful for you guys for being a part of the fishing community. And this is just what makes life awesome, guys. And this is what makes my life awesome. So thank you. Unfortunately, my GoPro was glitching on day three and four. So I don't have any footage of the fish that I caught and lost on those days. But something really important happened. Now you guys have seen me catch big halibut, white sea bass, striped bass, leopard sharks, four foot shovel nose guitar fish, four foot angel sharks, all on the Battlestar 115 with the stock hooks. And I've never had any hooks bend out on me. But on these two days, I started losing fish because my hooks were bending out. And it got me wondering, why am I all of a sudden losing fish to bent hooks? I think I'm fishing better than ever. We're ready to get them today. Keeping my drag set looser. So I'll lose less fish, pull the hook less. Let's get them. We're gonna fish from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m., which is a high tide swing. And then we're gonna switch, and then we're gonna fish 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., which is an incoming tide at sunset. Ready for the second sesh of the day and here we are fishing oh about 5 30 p.m we're gonna fish till maybe eight or nine or something like that uh the tide's really low standing on this rock we're a little bit early honestly the next hour of cranking will probably be very low probability of catch but always a chance that you might catch the fish of a lifetime so keep your bait in the water see what happens Mike is on. He's got one off the rocks over there. Little striper. They're out there. Woo! Good one, dude. Uh, oh, definitely. I'm thinking 20. Yeah, 20. That's the dub, bro. He just got D dubbed 805. Thank you. <laughs> Excellent. And after about 15 minutes, I hooked one. Rod bent good. It was a good solid fish, probably a keeper. Came off after about two or three seconds. My hooks looked good. Just didn't, just, just popped off. Just wasn't hooked. Obviously, it was barely hooked. I got my drag turned down and I don't think I did anything wrong there. As I hit stop, I hooked up. Where am I gonna land this fish? Gosh, he fought pretty hard for a little fish. He looks small. He fought pretty hard for a little guy. Looks like he's snagged up, so he's on there pretty good. Let's just wait for the, let's wait for a wave to come in. Oh, there it is. All right, let's measure him because he does look too small. I think he looks too small. Let's let's double check. You never know until you check. Legal, right? He's a half inch over. That's 18 and a half, I'll take it. Dang, Mikey just hooked up, had one on for about seven seconds and then it pops up. So I learned three great tips that I want to share with you now. 
I made the decision that in the future, when I'm targeting these trophy striped bass, I'm gonna do three things. Number one, I'm gonna upgrade my hooks to the VMC four times strength hooks. Number two, I'm gonna use a slow action rod with a softer rod tip that bends easier. And number three, I'm gonna keep my drag turned down lower than I ever have before. These are all great tips when targeting striped bass in the surf. In fact, my friend Edward from Hook to Cook channel told me to do these exact things and I was just being stubborn and I didn't do them. And as a result, I lost about five or six fish. So I learned my lesson and I made these adjustments and now I want you to see how I made these adjustments over day five and six so you don't have to learn them the hard way the way I did. First cast, low tide spot, let's do this. Drag, get that drag set. We've learned, we've learned to keep our drag set low and to use a softer rod, a slower action rod. All right, wish me luck guys, let's get them. Let's get them today. Hopefully one more big 30 inch. I think I'm gonna, the way, the ocean's flat. There's no surf, it's just totally flat. That's not really great for striper fishing. Um, but the, if they're still here, they'll probably still be biting. And the water color is a little on the brown side, a little murky, but the clarity is just fine. We're looking at about 24 to 36 inches of visibility. Uh, that's perfectly fine for striper fishing. Keep in mind, stripers will eat in murky water and that ra the rattling of your jerkbait will help them find the bait. Another thing you can do is slow down. I find I get most of my bites when I'm doing this slow steady retrieve like this right here. Um, wind, wind isn't too bad right now. It's blowing that way to the left. So I cast easy to the left, easier to the left, but I am able to cast with the right no problem at the moment too. And what other conditions we got going on? The water temp should be at about, I said 52, but I'm not so like sure. Tip for you, for those of you who fish with backpacks, keep your shoulder straps nice and loose because if you got those things tight and you're casting, casting for hours, you'll notice that your shoulders start to really hurt and get sore and you're like, what the heck is wrong? As soon as you loosen those straps up nice and loose, all of a sudden that just goes away you can cast for hours and hours and hours and the backpack does not cause that problem anymore so keep your shoulder straps nice and loose so we all just bailed off the rock because there was no action and then michael caught one so two he jumped back up on the rock i i moved over here to the right i want to i want to check in on this area over here and see if anybody's home and um but mainly i just wanted to see if the striped bass had moved up over here and that's why we weren't getting many bites down there. So check in here, check in there. And if we don't get them off the beach over there, I might just walk the whole beach and just go look for them. I'm gonna give you a tip on how to fish the Battlestar 115 over structure like rocks and eelgrass. See where that wave is passing right now? You see that little swell in the water right there? That's called a boiler rock. It's sort of a boil on the surface. You can see the, the, wa the current as the water passes over it. We're gonna fish our Battlestar 115 right over that or right next to it. So here we go. Bam, I'm gonna cast over it. I'm gonna give it a jerk and dig it down. Okay, now I'm probably right about on top of it. I'm gonna pause, let that bait float. Okay, count to about four or five. And now just a little tiny jerk up and pause and wait. And then a little tiny jerk and pause and wait. And now I'm just gracefully swimming my bait over that structure. Little jerks, pause and wait. Little jerk, pause and wait. Okay, I think I'm past it now, so I'm gonna lower my rod tip. And try to dig it down nice and slow through this whole zone right here. All right, so now you guys can see how you, you start with your rod tip down to get it deep. And then when you think you're approaching that structure, you put your rod tip up and just do little jerk and pause, little jerk and pause, little jerk and pause, work it through over the structure. And then once you think you're past the structure, you lower your rod tip again and get it nice and deep and fish it slowly on the inside of the structure. There's the guys doing their thing down there. So here's something else that I think I'm learning about striped bass fishing. When it rains, the water level in the creek increases, it rises, and all that fresh water flows out into the ocean.
And that is what concentrates the striped bass around the freshwater outlet. Over the next few days, that water level is going to decrease in the river. In other words, it's going to come down. And as that happens, the striped bass seem to disperse. They're no longer concentrated in that same spot. So if you're fishing for striped bass and those are the conditions, consider walking down the beach and fishing a longer stretch of beach. Now's the time to spread out and go look for where the fish might be. Dolphins working over here. They are hard at work. I can tell they're hunting. They're not just cruising through. They're spending time here. They're hunting, they're eating. There's a lot of bait out there. Well, if a school of striped bass are out there, they just might herd up that bait and push it in shallow to take advantage of it in the surf zone where the bait is at a disadvantage. So hopefully there's a school of striped bass pushing some of that bait in shallow. They'll see my jerk bait all by itself swimming along alone. And then that, wow, that fish just jumped out of the water and now I'm just dragging him in on the surface. He straight up jumped out of the water. It was really cool. I wish I had caught that on video. And it's a freaking striped bass, but a little one. So keeping him over the water. All right, guys, we got one little shorty. Let's um very carefully release this fish. I'm gonna get my forceps, my hemostats out of my chest pack and we'll release them very carefully here so we don't get stuck. I said I was gonna do, I walked all the way down to the left end of the beach and started fishing my way back to the right. I've made my way about 200 feet. And as you can see, the wave crashes right, boom, there. And that's about where that fish bit. I'm casting over that way out there. There's no wind, so I can cast really far. And I think just right on that sandbar, he, he jumped on it. See, I cast way out there. And then I'm just aiming my rod straight forward. And then when I feel that yank, I'll just lift my rod tip straight up. I didn't get bites to the left, so I'm just going to keep making my way to the right. Of course, I'm going to fish this spot for a little bit longer to see if there's any more right here if we're schooling. Came off. He was a little one. This little one just grabbed it right in front of me. Came out of the water almost instantly, so I dropped my rod tip, kept him under the water. And then he popped off right there. That's too bad. But that's the second one I hooked. Hooked two, landed one. All right, they're still around, they're still around. On day seven, my friends Dan and Kathy had just returned from their vacation in Maui and they headed straight for the beach to try their luck on this hot striker bike. So Dan caught that Mondo 15 inch barred surf perch on the Battlestar 115. And then I continued to comb my way to the right down the beach to see if I could locate any more striped bass along the way, the same way I did the previous day. Comb the beach, hoping that I might happen across a lone fish. But the blitz was over. As you can see, I did not get any more striped bass that day. In fact, I didn't even get any more bites that day. Conditions had changed, the stripers had dispersed, and they just weren't around anymore. All right, my friends, that's all she wrote. The party is over. 
I did not get one single bite here today. And the one condition that I think is really making the difference is rain. There's no rain. There's no storm front coming through. And the fish have dispersed. Wherever they've gone, they're not here anymore. And what's gonna bring them back to this location is when it rains and the water level of the creek rises and flushes out fresh water into the ocean, that's gonna bring them back and concentrate them here again. For a few days or a week, I guess, this buzz lasted over a week, about a week. So one of the biggest takeaways from this video is that wherever you live, get on Google Maps and look for your biggest, most prominent freshwater outlet, some sort of river or creek that has an estuary. Even if there's a sandbar blocking that estuary so it's not flowing all year, when it rains, that sandbar is gonna break, the water's gonna flow, there's a good chance that that's gonna be a great spot for catching striped bass. They're gonna concentrate right around that freshwater outlet at least for a few days until the water level has descended and conditions have changed. So now you'll know where your local striped bass hole is located and you'll know when to fish for them. So get out there and chuck your Battlestar 115 at them. I hope this video has been helpful. I hope you're super pumped for when the next striper blitz happens at your local striper hole. As always, please like, subscribe, and hit the bell for notifications for future videos. Thanks for watching Vince Goes Fishing. Fish safe, fish legal, fish hard, and good luck.